recently sat down with Scotty Marsh, a prolific and oftentimes controversial street artist whose roots are in Sydney but has had an impact on a global scale. What started out as love for counterculture and street art has led him to becoming a finalist in both the Moran Portrait Prize and the Archibald Prize. We caught up with Scotty in Newtown at his iconic George Michael mural. So just a heads up, you will hear the occasional train and car passing by during the recording. We got to chat about counterculture, Web3 and community building, his project the Bin Kings, and of course, Dick Butts. Let's dive in. <coughs> Rock and roll time. We're here with the uh, Aussie Street icon, Scotty Marsh. How you going, bro? Fucking awesome. You might know Scotty from the uh, Abbott and Pell mural. We're just in front of the uh, George Michael and soon to be, what was the mural you were just painting yesterday? Uh, it was a mural in support of the Iran protests in Alexandria. Finger on the pulse, man. Innovative creations that evoke, I think, a lot of... Uh, a lot of emotion, as seen by a lot of the feedback that people give um, your murals. It's, it's awesome seeing you around Sydney and up and down the coast. And you're also the founder of the Bing Kings. Yeah, yeah. Pretty... Oh, hang on. you got a little fucking... you got a mad bug on me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, also shit. founder of the Bing Kings, which is a, uh, a fresh take on our beloved Ibis birds that bethrone all our, uh, all our bins around Sydney. It's pretty fucking <laughs> awesome. Um, welcome to the uh, Oz NFT podcast, man. How you going? Yeah, good, bro. Thank you. Fuck yeah, fuck yeah, and mate. We're uh, we're all about like this kind of this new culture of what NFTs are, are bringing to artists, creators, curators, and everyone in between. And I think part of that is you have been on a counterculture wave for a few years now. Yeah. And I guess we'd just like to dive in, like, what got you into that? Um. Well, I think for me, when I first started hearing about it, um, the thing that appealed to me was like for years, I'll, I paint murals and I paint work in the street, right? And it gets destroyed most of the time, either um, gets destroyed, you know, by someone that doesn't agree with the message or the council, or even the police have painted over my work in the past. So um, I've always kind of strived to find some sort of artifact so something exists, you know? Um, and you know I do that by print editions or by selling merchandise or something with the image but it's not really the same as the mural or sometimes I paint an original on canvas but it's still not this it's just kind of like a bird in a cage you know if it's supposed to be outside um, so the first thing that appealed to me was that it's like forever on the blockchain and it's kind of um, it is that artifact um, and it fits so well just because you know for years before NFTs, I've been saying that my work finds its audience in a digital space. So like I'll paint it on a wall, it'll, you know, be there for a certain amount of time, get destroyed, maybe a thousand people see it or whatever. But um, it's on social media and online where uh, people find my work for the most part and millions of people see it and that's where it kind of gets its reach and it really finds its audience. So this idea of having something digital that's uh, verifiable and it's kind of like an artifact um, really, really appealed to me. Um, so I thought it just fit perfectly with what I was doing. Yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, I think last time we spoke over the phone, we were talking about how you can actually see it here. You've got you've got crayons for starters. Um, yeah, love chalk. A chalk, sorry, yeah. And uh, you know, allowing people to have a conversation over the kind of vandalism uh, yeah. that that happened to to your work. Can we just touch on like a bit of the culture uh, with street art specifically? Because you know, I, I saw on your website you've been talking about how you bring fine art to the streets and out of, you know, sort of off canvases and out of galleries, which I think is really important for the culture and really important for that to start those conversations. Can you talk to a little bit about, you know, the fact that street art is not owned by anyone, but can be, I guess, start a conversation with, with and for anyone? Um, well, I guess it's pretty democratic in a sense. You can just go write your name on someone else's shit. Um, <laughs> and like my background's in graffiti, right? So. Um, graffiti artists are pretty resourceful people, you know, it's a lot of DIY and it's a lot of problem solving, especially when you're dealing with, you know, painting trains and there's security and there's a camera here and a sensor there. It's always a problem solving, that, w that was always a problem solving exercise for me. So when I kind of moved into the art world, the problem was that like all I wanted to do was paint graffiti or paint paintings about graffiti. but. Um, you know, people in the art world didn't speak that language. It didn't make sense to them culturally. They weren't involved in graffiti culture, so it didn't, they didn't understand it, and neither did the general public. Um, so I s tried to kind of merge 
build a bridge between those two worlds in a sense. So I started painting these floral works. Um, originally I did a bo body of work on the female nude and then floral still lives. And the, the idea behind that was kind of um, taking traditional notions in the fine art world that, that art people can understand and wrap their head around and even the public, you know, understands that a, a floral still life is a kind of traditional kind of art thing. Um, and then pairing that with graffiti culture in the mediums and the style that I use, um, in the techniques that I use and little symbols and stuff which represent graffiti culture. So that's kind of where that came from. So, you know, for me, graffiti is probably the most important factor in my life in terms of shaping the person I am. It's something I've been doing since I was like 12 years old or something. Um, so I kind of want to stay true to that and use that in my work and I guess represent graffiti and graffiti culture and speak about it. And, because otherwise all you hear is a current affair just six monthly story saying that they're a bunch of cockroaches and tip rats and fucking the worst people ever so it's because they're not part of it they uh they wish they were were bombing yeah they just don't really understand it and the only people that are gonna like who are kind of dumb enough to go on the media and do it other than me um <laughs> got the media and go yeah fucking take the trains and fucking do they're usually not the best example of uh you know the person that you want to represent the culture so we've actually caught up with a few graph artists around Sydney um, and Melbourne as well yeah. and I think like you said there's that it's like surfing skiing being in yeah. winter sports it's a fundamental part of your identity yeah 100% and it's also like part of a, a bit of counterculture it's it's like to someone who's not in it it's kind of edgy it's, you're breaking the law yeah. you're, you're throwing up your representation and you know there's also street beef that comes with graph culture especially with like Eshe culture in, in Sydney uh, do you see a place for like well, graph being a counterculture as well do you see NFT tech and kind of digital art as a uh, as kind of approaching that wave as well I guess yeah in a sense because um, it is really like one of the things that really appeals to me of crypto is it's going against the mainstream and, and it's really um, it's really shaking things up, I guess, in yeah. terms of the financial world especially and in the art world, you know. Um, for a long time, the galleries hold all the power, you know. I've never actually done a commercial gallery show for that exact reason. Um, and now when you, you know, you've got the commission on sales forever. So that was something, you know, if I was painting paintings and selling them in a gallery, for example, I'd sell a painting, they'd take a 50% commission. Um, and then whoever bought that painting 10 years later would sell it for more money because hopefully my career went well. I'd never see any of that, you know? So you've got to keep painting till you're dead, basically, if you want to keep making a living. Yeah. Um, so I think the commission on sales is huge. Like, it really is huge. And what about, like, the connectivity for communities? Because Graph is such a big community and people kind of know each other by their by their pieces or their throwies, whatever. Do you think that the, the, the sprouting up of all these new and diverse communities especially the one that you're in your 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 own um that you you manage as well with bing kings that's starting to open up a new creative counter counter wave um yeah yeah for sure and i think it's one of those things it's new so you know you have a flood of people coming into the space and a flood of projects and everything and then over time the the rubbish will get shaken out and, yeah um the stuff that's kind of really in for the long haul will hang around um for me it's been great because you know I, I love making works that are interactive, like this one. I like interacting with people, um, interacting with the people that follow me on social media and stuff like that. So there's been another way where they kind of get buy-in and I can build a bit of a community around my work, which already existed, but in this way, I, I think it's a bit cool because I actually get the, a piece of art that kind of goes with it. And yeah, totally. And how does uh, Bing Kings explore this? Well, that's kind of was the idea to build a community yeah. around my work with the Bing Kings. Like I was already painting, you know, bin chicken works and murals and stuff just because I thought it was a, a really cool kind of Australian, unique Australian yeah. piece of culture, you know, the bin chicken. Yeah. Kind of like the anti, um, you know, mascot. You yeah. got the kangaroo and the and the koala and stuff and the, the bin chicken's almost like the urban Australian mascot or something. 100%. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With their TNs it's, and their... Yeah, it's kind of like this... It, personifies the kind of Aussie battler or something like that so um so yeah I was actually the whole project came about really organically I was speaking I've been kind of dealing with the run at wild guys and we're talking about creating some of my murals as uh, nft works 
and then Adam was explaining to me these generative projects and I was like really I was like pretty fascinated by it and at the time I was actually painting a series of bin chicken canvases with like pixelated traits on them like Thug Life Sunnies and Siggies and stuff like that, that I'd done in the past um, I was like man I'm pretty sure I'm painting one of these projects right now yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we started talking about it and then got really excited about the idea so that's kind of where it all came from in the beginning Cool. Yeah, cool. I mean, the one word that you mentioned was community. So why did you think about community or why was that an, an alluring factor for you when getting into NFTs? Well, I think, well, I've already kind of been doing that on social media, especially on Instagram, which is where I'm kind of most active. Um, and I d definitely have like a core group of people that follow my work and collect my work and stuff. And this is just an extension of that, basically. Um, and it's cool because everyone feels like they're in a bit of a club. Like we had a um, IRL event not long ago. We brewed our like community beer. It's called Bin Juice. Sick. <laughs> With uh, Yuli's Brews in Alexandria. So it's a cool process. I got to go pick all the hops and like found a bunch of beers that I thought were a good comp. And we came up with a recipe for a hazy IPA. Um, and then we had an IRL kind of tasting party and exhibition linked to the launch of that, which was, it was cool, man. Super cool. So... Just doing things like that, like I want to do more IRL stuff with the community, I think is cool. Yeah, that's that's sick. And what is it about like Web3 or NFTs that prompted that kind of community sort of uh, initiative or response? In what sense, you mean? In the sense that, you know, we've you've, you've had a community on yeah. Instagram and you've had followers, etc. But now Web3 has opened up a new vehicle for you to communicate with them in a different yeah. way. I think Discord's been huge, to be honest with you, because it's almost like a... Um, it's almost like a group chat with all the people that follow you. So you kind of got that direct involvement and it's, it's just different. It's more, I guess, connected. There's like a disconnect or a barrier there on social media um, where I think this way is kind of a better way of communicating. And, and people have buy-in, you know, um, because of the financial rewards when these projects go gangbusters or something, people feel like part of something and they want to promote it and they want it to do well you know what i mean so there's a different kind of energy there yeah. in that sense it's amazing yeah. for you to take your fans with you as well on that journey yeah well like there's most of the people that hold um like we, we haven't sold any bin kings i think one sold on the secondary market because no one wants to fucking sell them they're just listing them for 6.9 ETH. <laughs> <laughs> um, because they've got buy-in and they're, they're like truly a part of it they're not just a bunch of flippers and, and stuff which is super cool you know it's pretty rock solid in that sense and a lot of the, most of the people a lot of them it's their first time buying it was their first time buying an nft a lot of them are now super involved in the nft space and and you know binking was their first nft and there's a bunch of people that just bought it because they want to support my work and you never sit like it's sitting in a wallet somewhere and they probably forgot the yeah. <laughs> got the address but they know <laughs> yeah but they know they hold one they've got the screenshot <laughs> What I'm hearing here is you, for an artist uh, with like a, an established kind of reputation or is starting to explore um, building up their community, NFTs are starting to give that, that direct communication to people that do want to support them. And then it's, it's that secondary layer when you can start to do like activations, start to do fun left of field stuff like, hey, let's brew our own beer. And what I love about that is you did it with Yuli's, which is like a local you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's it's like, hey, like NFTs don't necessarily have to be this international bum rush of like, we got to buy, flip, sell, work out what's peaking next. But it's like, hey, you can actually just get around something in your local area. Yeah, well, it's all pretty local, I guess. Like the whole project is just elements of Australian culture and elements from my journey, I guess, yeah. through life. So it's, it, it never really had like big international appeal or something the project it was always going to be really Aussie centric and that's yeah. what I wanted as well you know yeah absolutely and um, I mean like that Aussie follow Aussie wave that swept through um, yeah. crypto Twitter did you have like a mad bump from that too there's like oh we totally forgot that Scotty Marsh had his own project yeah well, yeah I did and there was a lot of people in there that were like wow I followed your work for ages I never knew you had a fucking yeah. NFT project which was cool to find those people because they're the people I want to find you know? yeah yeah totally and you've got, a, uh, you've got a shared studio, right, in Sydney? Yeah, I share a studio with about half a dozen other artists, yeah. Cool. And have you broached this kind of conversation with them? Yeah, it was spoke, like everyone kind of spoke. There was a huge buzz around NFTs, you know, a year ago, so everyone was kind of talking about it. Um, but I think I'm the only one that's kind of that I'm aware of. James Girat, we used to share a studio, but he's not in my current studio. He's kind of got heavy into the NFT space as well. 
Um, but other than that, none of the other 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 ugh, other artists have really taken that next step into it. I think there's a technical barrier there as well. So I was fortunate enough that I kind of put my feelers out and then found I had a mutual friend with the Run It Wild guys and then we made that kind of connection. But I think if I was on my own, like, I'm fucking hopeless with technology, so. <laughs> Play your strengths, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, okay, I was going to ask you about that. So essentially, you, you you didn't really have a foray into crypto or tech or anything like that? Yeah, I had, a, like, some Bitcoin and which I used to buy bags online years ago. I was just in a wallet. <laughs> buy some pingers. Um, Most expensive pingers of your life. <laughs> yeah, I know. Now they are, right? Um, but then, yeah, that was about my the extent of my crypto knowledge um, until then. But, you know, it's been good for me because I've got super fucking crypto-centric and now I've kind of sussed it all out and um, I feel like I really understand the space a lot better and, you know, I bought a gang of crypto. and Yeah, that's cool. What's your advice then to sort of people in your studio and, and other artists that, you know, probably were in the same position as you where they were looking at other projects taking off and, you know, starting to create these communities around them, but that are a bit too scared to get in or apprehensive or not sure if it's the right time. Do you have any advice to yeah, based actually, on your experience? I, I do, because especially with these uh, generative projects, I was finding it difficult to wrap my head around because it really does take a bit of a paradigm shift. Um, and I'd say buy into an existing project like and be involved in that existing project and you'll learn a lot like i i was like fuck i wouldn't buy into one of these things i was i was just looking and then on twitter popped up um crypto dick butts and i just thought it was the <laughs> fucking stupidest shit ever i was like yeah i'll throw fucking two grand at a jpeg of a dick butt like pixelated dick butt just because it was fucking hilarious <laughs> and my girlfriend thought i was a fucking retard <laughs> wasn't wrong but anyway girlfriend they're doing gangbusters now. <laughs> <laughs> Generational wealth. Um, dick butts went to the moon. They did. And they're going to keep going. So, yeah, I got a bunch of dick butts. Um, but, yeah, that's how I kind of got my head around it, was buying into a, into a project and getting involved in that community. I painted a little dick butt mural <laughs> up at the Gladiator, what, like a year or two ago. Um, yeah, so that would be my advice, buying into something. And then you, it's the same, you know, you got buy-in, so you're involved. I think inadvertently you just gave two Ashley Cracker pieces of advice just then. Buy dick butts. Buy, actually three. <laughs> <laughs> buy dick butts, buy into a project, and if it makes you laugh and you're like, this is so fucking stupid that I love it, that's like part of the uh, the allure of what gets people into yeah, this Yeah, I stuff. just love the art and I love the yeah. gag, you know? Yeah. I love the fact that they didn't take themselves seriously at all. They didn't have like a roadmap. They didn't promise anything. And then, what's been interesting as well, watching Dick Butts as a project, is as that community forms and people get excited about it, even though it started just as a fucking a bit of a gag. Now the community's starting to do things, you know, because they're all together. And they're like, "Oh, let's do this. Let's do that." So, I think it's the community's the important thing. I think the heart in the beginning, as long as you. Yeah, it has some appeal and people can get behind it. I think once you get the community going, that's when the project's going to... You're going to have the greatest roadmap in the world, but it doesn't mean shit if no one cares about it. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Do you think that's where a lot of uh, people kind of miss the mark is they, they try to think of this awesome roadmap to somehow attract community instead of just focusing on maybe like yeah, just building having a good first? Yeah, just have a good time. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it's about, right? Yeah, yeah, it's like the rest will figure itself out, you know? Yeah. Cool. And you seem like, as, like as you said, you weren't really tech, te tech orientated. You have spent your life as as an artist and a, a curator and instigator on yeah. walls. And you don't necessarily have to be an expert to make a make an impact or, or start to get into the space. Yeah. Well, there's other people do that for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like anything. Like, um, if, for example, you know, there's some sculptures that I want to make. Um, so I reach out to people who are making sculptures all the time to get advice on how to do this because I'm not going to go back to you know university and do a whole another degree in sculpture making or um, do an apprenticeship in bronzing and you know what I mean. So you have ideas, you need to find the people to facilitate those ideas. Absolutely, just yeah, utilize your network around you and, yeah. and grow together. I do want to ask on that. What's next? What are you What are you looking at? What are you excited to achieve, conquer both Web three and IRL? Well, I will, I've got a Genesis drop that I'm kind of putting together for um, a collection of my murals. So, it's, like in the future, I want to start 
not, not only the fact that I'm building this artifact is cool, but also the creative possibilities in terms of digital stuff. You can really, you know, you can make your murals move and talk and have different expressions and maybe change over time and stuff like that. So I'm kind of working on a collection of stuff with that. Um, I think my Genesis drop will basically be a collection of some of my favorite murals that all got destroyed. So there's one that got destroyed by the cops, there's one that got destroyed by like loony fucking religious cunts, yeah, there's one that got yeah. destroyed by like super woke lefty cunts, there's, <laughs> there's like a bunch of them. So the, that's the common theme is all murals that got wrecked basically. Right, but just people just broke their brains. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They full lost it. Can't, um, can't stop love, baby. <laughs> So yeah, that'll be like my first drop of NFTs um, and they're already pretty much sitting there ready to go um, and then just creating more one-of-one -one works and, and just kind of creatively kind of navigating that digital space as a medium, I guess. Cool. Do you engage with uh, many other Australian projects? Um, no, not really to be honest. Just just mine, dick butts, and that's about it. Like, there's a few other discords that I'm in, that, yeah. a few Aussie ones that I kind of poke my head in, just have a look and see what's going on. But, yeah. um, nah, that's about it. Yeah, cool. So what do you What do you think about the Australian landscape at the moment? Do you think that Australian artists are starting to come out now, or is it kind of more on the technical side? Like, do you have a general feel of the landscape, especially like Aussie Twitter? Not really. I think on Aussie Twitter, obviously, the the big Aussie follow Aussie thing's been cool yeah. to see. Well, it was super cool because I was like, eh, not many Aussies kind of involved, and you're like, fuck, there's tons of these cunts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> cunts. There's fucking heaps cunts. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was cool to see that you know there there is a lot of us. Um, and if we all support each other, I think we'll, we'll all do really well, you know. Because yeah. Australia's got such a unique kind of culture and spin on things that um, that other people can't really wrap their heads around. I think Bing Kings is a pretty good yeah. example of that, you know. They're like, why has he got a goon bag? Like, a bag of wine. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, whatever. What's the Nang? Why has he got a creamer in his mouth? You know, it's a fucking, it's a Nang champ. <laughs> What's a Nang? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Um, I think the more Aussies in the space, the better, really. So you've always been based in Australia. You're from Sydney? Yeah, from Sydney. Yeah. Have you ever travelled and worked? Have you ever... Uh, yeah, yeah. I've, tra I've travelled a lot, man. A lot around Europe, especially as a graffiti writer, we travel a lot, a lot. So, yeah, I've travelled fucking everywhere, really. Okay. Um, and painted graffiti mostly, but a few murals overseas. Yeah, sick. And so if you started to see, like, because you mentioned before, you've never worked in galleries... Have you started to see galleries become decentralized and sort of have more of an NFT model around them? Is nah. that something? No. Nah. <laughs> nah. Why is that? Because uh, they've got a business model that works for them. So yeah, right. you're going to stick to that. Yeah. yeah. It'll change. Um, like as even social media was, I think, a big change to that model because artists can now promote their own work. Like if social media didn't exist, I wouldn't be able to be doing what I'm doing independently because um, I'd have no means to promote my work and like slowly build something and build resources and stuff um so you needed that gallery to kind of um push you along and and bring the audience to you rather than you going out and finding the audience yeah like galleries are kind of getting a bit of heat and we were doing uh some work with an artist who put their work through a gallery and had it all nft backed and one of the conversations came out is like are they going to even be relevant in the future right as artists can now connect straight with their community the gallery was like that was the point where it's like, hey, you listen in a gallery, this is going to give you exposure and sell your stuff. Flipping that though, is like in, in galleries staying relevant, do you think galleries as like a community centre and, and a hub to bring people together will, will take form instead of them being like almost the retailer or distributor? Like why I'm asking that is we uh, did one last night in King Street just down the road and I noticed that, yeah, like, that was the that was like the centerpiece that kind of attract. It was like moths to the light. You know what I mean? It, it's like yeah, the gallery might the business model might change, but them as a presence in the community shouldn't change because that's actually bringing people together. It depends on what gallery and what they're doing. I guess they're they're yeah. always going to exist for sure. I'm um, like I don't want to just shit on galleries. Like I know a lot of gallery owners. They're really nice people and stuff. But it's like a business model that doesn't fit what I'm doing. Yeah. At the moment, anyway. Maybe in the future I'll do something. Yeah. Um, but I think you've also got to remind yourself that art's not just about art in that gallery sense. You know, it's an investment and. Um, 
it's somewhere for rich people to park their money when you start getting yeah. up to those high-end galleries. So it stops being so much about the art and being a bit more about that kind of thing. You know, it's yeah. like a scarce asset. Yeah. Like, where do you hear that word all the time? So yeah, there's kind of, it's all, they're always going to be around basically. Um, and good, I hope they are around. You know, so a lot of the smaller artist run spaces really do become kind of uh, cultural hubs and, and community hubs. I think a good space at the Lord Gladstone upstairs. Yeah, I it's actually an my, awesome space. Yeah, I used to yeah. have some of my first exhibitions there. And cool. a lot of artists in Sydney have, um, and it becomes like a little bit of a cultural hub where the artists meet each other and, and um, you know, uh, what's another example? Nanda Hobbs Gallery in Chippendale. That's more of a high-end gallery, but they've got a really great roster of artists that are always at the um, at openings and stuff. You meet a lot of people, and again, it becomes a little bit of a hub. Yeah. Um, and I think they're important for that as well. I guess that's one of those intangibles that comes with it. Totally. I like the uh, I like the Lord Gladstone. Who's uh, when I was at UTS, a lot of the artists came and launched their pieces there. Whether it was like digital, physical sculptures and stuff. And that, the Lord Gladstone is also like a pub and a restaurant that's becoming what it is. It's just a centerpiece of the Chippendale kind of community. Yeah, well, it's like that lo-fi version of a gallery, you know, yeah. offering spaces to, uh, you know, emerging artists and um, sort of students and stuff like that. So you get a chance to actually have a show. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's, it's, a, uh, it's yeah, an opportunity space. Yeah, 100%. What's got you most uh, most excited or most bullish on the space? I suppose uh, the Web3 space right now. Um, well, I guess like my involvement, the metaverse, I kind of dipped my toe in a little bit, but I uh, mm. haven't fully wrapped my head around it. It's yeah. more I'm kind of on the outside making art and yeah. wanting to continue with the NFT stuff, yeah. um, continue with Bing Kings and just use that digital space as a medium, you know, I think it's exciting. Being able to animate your murals and not just have them as like a 2D oh. thing on a wall. Have you heard, uh, I wanted to tell you, have you heard of Remark? Remark is an NFT tech yeah. that you can do a piece yeah. and other people can graffiti oh, yeah, and cool. add on to that piece, right? So yeah. just like a wall, you've got you've got your piece yeah. and then someone else can come along, design something and spray it on. And yeah. then that's actually like, that adds to the overall piece. It's obviously validated through the smart contract. Like, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's what I love is like to... this interactive work. Like this is the yeah. best example of it, the George Michael mural. So yeah, the original, great example. the original version of this got uh, destroyed by a bunch of kind of religious nuts and they painted the mural black, you know, and then the community who came out in support and with chalk wrote all these lovely messages on the basically turned into a black bulletin board of um, positive positivity. Yeah, it was so, awesome. I yeah, thought, it was. Yeah. So when I replaced the mural, I did like a version 2.0 of George. We got a, we got um, a couple of photos of that, yeah. Yeah, I included the black paint down the bottom. Yeah. Um, the you know the community uses a chalkboard so interactive stuff like that um i love you know so if you can bring that into a digital space that's super cool 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 and then, and you're just expanding that uh that connection with people people are like oh cool i feel a part of this no matter where on the australian coastline or internationally yeah that's been a cool real cool as well as like being kings we've got people from all over australia in the community yeah um which is super cool you know i'll be painting a mural in brisbane or something and someone will come down and go oh i've got a pink king <laughs> and so you're just just off air um, before we start wrapping up you're always looking for a good wall yeah always looking for walls yeah the biggest problem I have is not enough walls yeah. there are plenty of things to paint not enough canvases so if you got walls email me ladies and gentlemen send me photos send, send the man some walls yeah anyway we can find you on twitter at scotty marsh uh, Scotty, Scott uh, Scotty with an IE Scotty underscore Marsh at Twitter uh, Instagram Scotty dot Marsh um, same spelling and then Facebook Scott Marsh forward slash no Scott Marsh forward, Facebook forward slash Scott Marsh art yeah we'll Matt we'll put in the links below yeah definitely check out the uh, the Bing Kings and, and send the man some walls www.bingkings.com hell yeah have you minted out? Uh, nah still still minting Cool, cool. And there's nothing on secondary, so they're, uh, they're yeah, being held. You go, unless you got 6.98. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us on our, on our podcast today, mate. It's been an absolute honor, and we've been uh, long-time fans. And looking forward to uh, getting into the Bing Kings community and seeing what you do with the, uh, with the walls that should be coming your way. Yeah, cheers, bro. No, thanks for the invite, boys. Absolutely, man. Thanks so much.